Lars Enerson here with an update from Israel. Well, uh, Tisha B'Av, the fast of the fifth month, came and went and no attack from Iran. And uh, I believe that Iran probably will not attack Israel in the near future. The reason for that is twofold. Uh, number one, Israel has declared very clearly via uh, both the United States and the EU to Iran that if they attack, Israel will retaliate and they will retaliate disproportionately. And before, uh, Israel has also said that they will attack Iran's nuclear uh, weapons program. And this is something that I believe Iran will want to avoid at any cost at this time. So my estimation is that uh, the front, when it comes to a direct confrontation with Iran, probably will not take place at this time, even though they continue to uh, threaten Israel all the time, basically every day. The second reason also for uh, my uh, estimation that there will be no attack from Iran at this time is because the attack when Israel took out the leader of Hamas, uh, Ismail Haniyeh, right in the very heart of Tehran, it has deeply shaken uh, Iran. And they uh, need to get to the bottom of how Israel could do this because it is evident that Israel now has the ability to penetrate right into the very seat of basically the government in Iran. And uh, they need to come to grips with their home front before they enter into confrontation with Israel. But uh, Iran has always tried to use their proxy armies around Israel and the most dangerous uh, and the oldest and the strongest of all of these is, of course, uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon. And this front is very, very dangerous, very, very tense. And uh, it is something that we need to concentrate uh, our prayers uh, to pray for this front right now because Israel cannot tolerate that Hezbollah has driven tens of thousands of Israelis from their homes in the northern part of Israel. This is uh, something that Israel, as I said, cannot tolerate. So there must come a confrontation with Hezbollah. Of course, the United States does not want that to happen. Um, for some reason, they don't want Israel to be strong and defeat their enemies. And this is because we're actually in a confrontation, in a battle right now between the global uh, community uh, preparing the way for the Antichrist and Israel and Jerusalem. It's a confrontation between Babylon and Jerusalem, if you want to put it that way. And uh, the global powers, they can tolerate Israel, but an Israel that is weak and an Israel that is dependent on them. An independent Israel that is able to defeat her enemies, that's not what they want to accept because that is a thorn in their side. They want to unite the whole world in their agenda and Israel is the primary obstacle in the way. But we will pray in line with the word of God that Israel will be victorious over her enemies because God is going to restore his people in this uh, end times, uh, preparing the way for the Messiah. So we are going to continue here to uh, pray now uh, based on uh, Zechariah chapter 8, uh, talking about uh, the uh, season of joy that God is going to bring to Israel. And as I said, this year, the difficult period between the fast of the fourth and the fifth month have been a period of, that has been very victorious for Israel. Uh, and that's an indication that God is restoring his people. So I want to read from verse 14 here in Zechariah chapter eight. Uh, For thus says the Lord of hosts, as I purposed to bring disaster to you when your fathers provoked me to wrath and I did not relent, says the Lord of hosts. So again, I have pur purposed in these days to bring good 
to Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. And I skip down to verse um, uh, 16. These are the things uh, that you uh, shall do. Speak the truth to one another, render in your gates judgments that are true and make for peace. Do not devise evil in your hearts against one another and love no false oath. For all these things I hate, declares the Lord. And then it comes in verse 18. And the word of the Lord of hosts came to me saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the fast of the fourth month and the fast of the fifth and the fast of the seventh and the fast of the tenth shall be to the house of Judah seasons of joy and gladness and cheerful feast. Therefore, love, truth, and peace. Two things that we need to pray for Israel at this time, that they will love truth and peace. Now, in the Word of God, truth is primarily linked to God's Word and specifically the Torah. I want to read from Romans chapter 2, where Paul wrote uh, this. Uh, we read from verse 18. Um, you know his will, this is written to the Jewish people, you know his will and approve what is excellent. Why? Because you are instructed for the law. And then it says in verse 20, you are an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of children, having in the law the embodiment of knowledge and truth. It is the Torah that is the very embodiment of truth. And this revival in Israel back to the Torah that our friend Tim Hosteter in the United States saw in a prophetic dream a year before October 7, which is the feast of the Torah, uh, Simcha Torah. This is the very heart of the issue right now, that God wants to bring his people back to the foundation of truth in the Torah. And I want you to encourage you to look at this video. I have uh, a link to it under uh, this YouTube uh, in the description below. Please watch this video about the prophetic dream that Tim Hosteter had about the uh, atrocity on October 7 and what God wants to do in Israel. Secondly, it says you should love not just truth but also peace. We must continue to pray that God will root out those who foment strife in Israel uh, and uh, animosity and division and internal uh, uh, infighting because that is something that, that cannot be. A house divided its against itself cannot stand. And uh, it is encouraging what is happening since October 7 when it comes to to God rooting out this problem, but it's still a danger. But I want you to look at Caroline Glick's report about this. The link is also in the description below this YouTube, where she is explaining that uh, uh, this is beginning to, to be um, uh, rejected by the broad masses in Israel, these demonstrations against the government and so forth. Let's pray that the people of God will return to truth and to peace with one another. And that is also the prophecy that came forth through this man, Barry Wunsch, in Canada uh, last Sunday, October, or excuse me, August 4th, that God is now uh, weeding out those troublemakers from Israel. Let's continue that that will take place so that God can give victory and joyful uh, victories to Israel. The situation in Gaza is still very, very difficult. And there is going to be uh, supposedly uh, negotiations now again about a hostage deal. And these negotiations are mediated by Qatar and United States and Egypt. We must remember that all of these three um, so-called mediators are uh, have an interest in seeing Hamas staying in power in Gaza. That is evident from the way that uh, the United States has acted uh, towards Israel since October 7. Unfortunately, the present uh, administration in the White House uh, has this policy towards Israel. They do not want Israel to completely uh, destroy Hamas. And 
also Egypt has taken a different approach this time towards Israel of much greater hostility. So pray that Israel will stand firm on its demands that it must continue until Hamas is defeated. Thank you for praying. Uh, I also want to mention that we are in the midst of a building project here on our base in Israel outside of Jerusalem. And uh, this is, uh, it will be a, a, a foundation of, uh, of our ministry to reach the nations with uh, the word of the Lord to prepare the way for the Messiah. If you want to be a part of investing in this project, please contact us. You can also find information how to uh, donate in the description below this YouTube. So thank you for standing with us and God bless you. Shalom from Israel.